So today's subtitle is the reason for the plan. The reason for the plan. The first one is God's original plan. Yesterday we ended with a question. Why did God have the original plan? We know everything God does has a purpose. Do you agree? Everything has a purpose. God has a reason why he makes everything. So if God has a purpose for a plan, what's the reason for the plan? That is what we want to look at today. Let's say to the unique person beside you, what is the reason for the plan? Now, someone said that if you want to ask the manufacturer the reason why he's made something, you ask the manufacturer. Yes? Do you understand that? If you want to know why Mercedes-Benz decided to specifically design Mercedes-Benz and for what purpose you go to them and ask them, why did you manufacture this car? Is that not right? So let's ask God. Yes? Do we agree? Let's ask God. So Genesis 1, 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And yesterday we learned, we learned that not two things are meant there, but just one. So God said, let us make man in the likeness of our image. That's right. Do you understand that? And then, what I have done is this. When you look at the board, the screen, I have done something there. For now, let's leave it. The Holy Ghost has hidden <laughs> some mysteries in just that verse. And you would not see it if you rush through your Bible study. So I want to show you what the Holy Ghost has hidden in this verse. Now, listen, the Bible says, and God said, let us make man in the likeness of our image. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And then look at verse 27. So, God created man in his own image. Do, do, do you see why in the in our image and after our likeness is just one thing that is meant there and not two things. Because the first phrase there, verse 27 says, so God created man in his own image. <laughs> Do you understand that? In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now, in all these times, the word used there for man isn't the man Adam, but human beings. Now, 
human human beings in general. This is because God does not live in time. So when God speaks, he speaks generationally. Do you understand that? So everything concerning you has already been spoken. You have to know what has been said and you walk in it. What you do has already been spoken by God. You have to identify what has been said about you. And then you walk through them. It is not something that is going to be done now. It has already been done. See, when I learned this, I changed the way I pray. Because if everything that has been planned by God concerning me has already been done, then I don't pray that God will do something for me. I pray that I... I come to the knowledge of what has been said about me and I walk in them. Because the Bible says in Ephesians that thanks be to God, the Father of us of all spirits. He says, Who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. God is not yet to bless us. He has already blessed us. Are you getting what I'm saying? When I came to understand this, I don't pray that God bless me. I pray that I identify the blessings so I walk in them. That is the difference. Because you'll be waiting for the blessing and you wouldn't get it. Because you're looking at the wrong places. I don't know how many of us have misplaced our keys. While the key is in your pocket, it's happened to me before. My car key was with me. But I was looking everywhere. Sammy, haven't you seen the car key here? Junior, where did I, you, I, I put my car key? Where, where was you, you, I, I looked everywhere until finally when I became aware that I took the key from where it always used to be and I put it in my pocket. I stopped looking. Do you understand? Until you know that you are already blessed. You will go to every prophet. They will say whatever they want to say. Until you know that you have been blessed already. Do you understand that? That is why I'm bringing this message. Because I want you to be aware of who you really are. And how God sees you. Think about this carefully. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he them, male and female created. Now, what I have done is this. I have merged 26 and 27. And I have purposely taken a chunk of 26 out. And the question I want to ask is, after I have finished reading 26 and 27, 
Minus what I have taken out. Let us see whether it makes sense. Do you understand? Please, do you understand? Okay, so I'm going to read 26 and then continue from 27. I'll read 26, a portion of 26. And then I'll continue from 27. This is revival. And, and I, am, I am making myself available to assure for you. <laughs> yeah, there's no need to translate because they've understood me. <laughs> uh, 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 that is the new English. I'm going to make myself available to Oshibo you. Say, I am being Oshibo. I am being Oshibo. That's right. You know what you are saying? You are not going to come back to you. Now, 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. 27. So, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. That, does it make sense? Does it make sense? It does. It does make sense. So, my question is this. If these verses make sense without the bit that I had taken out, why did the Holy Ghost put it there? If this makes sense, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he them. Male and female created. I mean, if this makes sense. It makes, it makes sense. So, but I have taken this whole thing out of the verse 26. So, if it makes sense without this, why did the Holy Ghost put it there? And if the Holy Ghost doesn't make mistakes, then there must be a reason why he kept this there, although without it, we still would understand. I won't say it today. I won't say in the today. So say Oh dear. Okay. Now, the chunk I took out says this, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. This I took out of verse 26. But 26 and 27 without this makes sense. Now, you would realize that I have highlighted the words and, 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 and. Now, we all know from our English classes that whenever you are enumerating something, 
you wait until the last item you bring and so usually bring comma comma so it will be like and the Lord and, and, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea comma then leave this there over the fowl of the air comma over the cattle comma over all the earth comma and is that what we do? That's how, that's what we were taught. Yeah. That is good English grammar. I like that. That is what we do. The thing is, there are some Bible versions that because they want to obey English grammar, They've taken the ends away. They've put the commas. But if you look at the Hebrew, the ends are there. So they are, so it, they are wrong to take these ends away. They are there for a purpose. Do we understand that? Good. So, if good grammar suggests that we bring commerce and to the last thing that we want to say, we bring that the conjunction end, why did the Holy Ghost decide to disobey English grammar? <laughs> Listen, if the Bible is an interesting book, if you just read it, you will miss so much because there are certain things that are not plain. You have to be made aware of it. I remember some years ago when I, I taught on this in details in a certain church. And this person came to me and said, ah, I have always been reading this verse, but I never saw the ends and the ends and the ends. I said, you saw them, but you just brushed through them. But today, I'm bringing your attention to this mystery. Hidden within these words. The Holy Ghost did not decide to disobey English grammar for nothing. The ends are there for a purpose. Whenever you come across a verse like this, with many ends, this is what you are being told. The writer is saying, don't rush through Every statement that is being made. Read the phrase. Ponder over what has been said. Before you go on to the next one. Do you understand that? That is what the ends are for. It is to magnify to you what is being said. It is to say, I'm exclaiming, watch this. Take attention, be all, take note of this. It's like the person shouting. Take note. Now, 
the place where the Holy Ghost is asking us to take note of what is being said when I took that place out we still make sense of the two verses but because the Holy Ghost wants to take note of what he wants to say he still put it there the many ends are there to say to you, take note. They are not there for nothing. Let's look at some um, examples. Genesis 25, 34. Now listen to this. Then Jacob said to Esau, Sorry, and Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat <laughs> and drink and rose up and went his way. Just one verse. How many of us have read this before? How many of us have seen this verse before yeah, in their Bibles? Let me see by hand. How many, and we've all read this verse before. But how many of us saw the ends? Did you see the ends? Nay. I had nay. <laughs> but the ends are there for a purpose. It was because the Holy Ghost wants to tell us that, that Jacob, when he gave Esau the bread and the potage of lentils, listen to what? Listen, listen. This this, this was the picture the Holy Ghost was painting. Esau, Esau did not just take the decision abruptly. Esau, Esau did not just feel, oh, I'm hungry today, so let me, let me take the... Uh, let me take the food from my brother and eat. The picture painted by the many ends is this. Esau deliberately Esau took time to think about what he was doing. He made up his mind after a long time or, or after a lengthy deliberation, and, and then decided that he would despise his birthright. So it was not a decision that was made lightly because he was hungry but he decided after a lengthy deliberations the picture is hidden in the verse but many times we've read this verse and we've just gone through it just like that but the holy ghost is shouting in the verse saying take note take note he so deliberately despised his birthright do you understand that so when God said Esau, uh, uh, yeah, Esau, I hate. Jacob, I love. God cannot hate. <laughs> but 
because of what Esau did. Are you getting what I'm saying? I wish I have time to go into that. I, sometimes time can be an enemy. Don't worry, let's go. <laughs> now, when the scripture wanted to magnify the impact that Jesus' teaching and preaching and healing had on the people he was talking to, the scripture used many ends. Matthew 4, 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sicknesses, and all manner of diseases among the people. Amen. I know we have read this verse several times. From this day forward, when you start studying your scriptures, please take note of the ends. It is not there for nothing. You see, I have always said this. Christians are the... Um, how should I put it? We are the custodians of of truth. But unfortunately, just, just like Pastor said, we have not come to know this truth. So we've not seen the liberation that comes from knowing the truth. Let's look at another one. Scripture used many ends when it wants to magnify the magnitude of Jesus' fame. The sort of people that were brought or attracted to him and his services to them. It is like saying, take note of the people that came to Jesus. Take note of the fame that Jesus had. And take note of everything that happened. Matthew 4, 24. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought and to him all the sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments. And those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those who had the palsy, and he healed them all. If you should write this in your English class, I'm sure your I'm sure your English teacher will say, "Aden manchere wadiye." But because the Holy Ghost wants to magnify. That's right, Ochinia Dream C. The magnitude of what Jesus did. He hid this in this verse. If the Bible you have is yours, underline all the ends that we have talked about. When you go home, that will remind you. Make notes beside. My Bible is full of notes. I, I, I like doing that. But if the Bible is not yours too, do it all the same. 
When the owner asks you why you've underlined this in his or her Bible, you can use that opportunity to explain. So whether it's yours or not, yes, yes. So what did we say the many ends are for? Magnifying what is being said there. Yes. Take note. It's like the person exclaiming to you. Say, don't forget this. The reason why I'm saying this is I want to magnify. I want to make the truth known to you. But it is hidden in plain sight. <laughs> How can you hide something in plain sight? But that is the beauty of scripture. That is the beauty of Bible study. So now let's go back to our verse. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created him. Then this was taken out. So... Let's look at the chunk that I took out. With what we've studied now, what did I say the, sub, the subtitle is? The reason, the reason for the plan. Yes? Yes? Good. So now let's, let's look at this. What did we say the many ends are for? Magnify what is being said. Let's give her a round of applause. Come on. To magnify what is being said. Or to let you know that the reason why I'm saying this is because of that. Says, so take note of what I'm about to say. Don't lose it. So now. Verse 26b. Let's all read it. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the eggs and over everything that is them So now, the Holy Ghost put this there for a purpose. Although taking it out still makes sense. 26 to 27 will make sense. So, if, if the Holy Ghost has decided to bring this there, and he has given us the reason why he's, he, he's brought this there, can I ask us a question? What is being said there? What is being magnified there? Come on. It's there in front of you. I, I want you to get it. It's there. Come in again. Come in again. Come in again. To have Come on, give the Lord a clap off. Let us make man in the likeness of our image. And then he hid the reason why he wants to make us in the likeness of his image. Over there. He says, let us make man in the likeness of our image. So, they have dominion 
over my creation. That is what is being said there. That is the reason why he brought this many ends in that verse. He is explaining to you the reason why he wants to create you in the likeness of his image. It is there. Many times we've just read it and just gone through like that. But it's there. Let us make man in the likeness of our image. Why? So he would have dominion. I hope everyone is clear. I said here yesterday that I want to I want your faith to be based on knowledge. Because you know what? Faith is not vague. Vague. It's not something that is hanging in the air. The Bible says faith cometh by. I like that, hearing and hearing the word of God. The word, the word there in the Greek for hearing is akuo. And that word means to hear and understand. It doesn't mean to just hear, but it is to hear and understand what is heard. So faith comes by understanding what you've heard. So faith, so faith has a process. A process. Yes, some steps. Before you have faith, there are steps that you take before you have faith. You understand. You have understanding. That is the beginning. And to have understanding is to have clarity in your mind. And when you have clarity, you become single-minded. Is that correct? Yes. When you have clarity, you become single-minded. That is what we call belief. Belief is single-mindedness. So faith starts by understanding and then to believe and then you take the step. It's an action. So the action was taken not because of something in the air. The action was taken because there was first an understanding. That was just by the way. Let's let's go quickly. <laughs> so so when God said, "Let us make man in the likeness of our image," it was because He wanted man to dominate the creation. So why did God specially design us? To be his visual interpretation. It is to have. Dominion. Over creation. All creation. What is dominion? In the Hebrew. The word dominion there means to rule. Or to reign. It is the Hebrew word radar. Now, when you come to the New Testament, that word dominion, which means rule, in the New Testament, it is the word basilia, the Greek word basilia. And it's the word kingdom. So, do you see the reason why Jesus. Okay, let's go on. <laughs> so when God said, let us make man in the likeness of our image and let them have dominion 
Onye tu mi biye. Do you realize that God did not say, let us make man in the likeness of our image so that we should have dominion? He says, let them. <laughs> he says what? Let them. That is the reason why on earth, you and I are the only people who have authority. I just hope you got this. So through you, the only way God can demonstrate his, um, his leadership qualities is through you. He says, let them. The only way that God bound himself by his words and said, let them have dominion. Let the human beings have dominion. The only way, the only way, so through you, God's kind of leadership qualities is displayed. Through you, God's kind of control is revealed. Through you, God's kind of managerial qualities is shown on earth. So if you're a cleaner, there should be some uniqueness about your cleaning. It should be different. If you're a leader, your leadership qualities must be different. It must reflect the rule of God. You will realize that God did not say that we should rule ourselves, we should reign ourselves. Nothing was said about human beings. That is the reason why if you want to rule over people, they rebel. Be because we are not made to be ruled, we are made to manage things. Am I communicating with us? Yeah. It means if you are a wife, we should see God's kind of rule in you. If you are a husband, God's kind of leadership must be demonstrated through you. If, if we are not seeing it, it is not because you are not. It is because you have not made yourself to be. <laughs> We are supposed to be rulers. Let's take control over our emotions. We all get hurt. But listen, if you master the hurt, <laughs> if you master the hurt, if you take control over the head, it doesn't mean you are weak. It means you are strong. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. I, I pray you don't lose this. Because it takes more strength to withhold anger than to... It takes more strength to withhold anger. So if I choose not to say a word, it doesn't mean that I'm weak. It means I'm strong. So don't don't take that lie that oh me pesa me in the doormat. No, you are strong. That is why you choose not to say a word. It is possible. You can do it. So through you, 
God's kind of managerial qualities is shown here on earth. This is the reason why God specifically designed you to become his visual interpretation. To be the channel through whom his rule and dominion is made known. So, so returning to God's original purpose for successful living means to return to the knowledge of God's reign or rule if you want to be successful, God's way. Therefore, Jesus says, don't worry, say you. What, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? And what shall we wear? For after all these things, those who don't know God and how he works, <laughs> fuzz over these things. Your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things. That is the reason why Genesis 1.26 He said, let, let us make man in the likeness of our image. Let them have dominion. Dominion. That is why you don't have to worry about what you eat, what you drink, and what you wear. Because you know that you have dominion. Now, someone would say, I have dominion. So, why the poverty? How are you going to experience your wealth if you don't see poverty? Hey! You, when God saw darkness, because God is light, God expressed who he truly is in the midst of light, the, the midst of darkness. So poverty comes so that you have the opportunity to express who you really are. So sickness comes so you have the opportunity to express, to display who you really are. Don't resist poverty. Rather, express who you are. Because what you resist stays. I hope you understand that. Write it down so you don't forget. That's why Jesus says resist nothing. Don't. When poverty comes, Say to the poverty, it's time to display the reign of God. When sickness comes, say, hey, sickness, good, you've knocked at the right door. Because through me, through me, the rule of God is going to be displayed. Tomorrow, I'm going to show you how to do it. And I know that when I come here next time, hey, 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 I want to see the manifestation of the rule of God in your lives. When you start, when you start seeing these things, please share with God church leadership. And I know they would let me know. And when I come back, we want to see those testimonies. We want to hear them and see them. And we declare today that anything that you lack, you will start displaying the rule of God in that situation. Be it sickness, you will start to display 
divine health from this day forward I stand in my stead I stand this day and I declare that today you experience and you start to display you start to express the rule of God in whatever situation you are in receive the strength today receive the strength of God today receive it today receive it today it is yours receive it today in the name of Jesus Christ you shall never lack anymore in your life hallelujah hallelujah when any news comes at your door you shall stand in the authority of God and you shall declare the word of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. That was the reason why Jesus came. Jesus says, Listen. But he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the rule of God. The kingdom of God is the dominion of God. The kingdom of God is the manifestation of God. Jesus says, Christos but he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also. Why? Because for this purpose, I have been sent. And I was smiling. <laughs> the reason why Jesus came was to come and was to remind you that before God created this earth, his plan is that you rule. Jesus says that was the reason why I came. To preach the kingdom of God. Now, please go and read everything about Jesus what Jesus taught. He never taught about anything apart from the kingdom of God. He says, for this purpose, I was sent. So he came to remind you that, hey, Minya, this is why you are here. You are here to reign. You are here to rule. Your place on earth is to have dominion. Listen, it does. We are Kesio. We are Tietio. We are Tintio. We are Coco. Wano Suo. Uhini Suo. Wano Yakitwo. We. Whoever you are, the reason why you are here is to have dominion. Jesus says, this is the reason why I was sent. And he taught nothing else apart from the purpose for which he was sent. And then listen to this. When he finished, after his resurrection, Listen to what Dr. Luke said. Dear Theophilus, this is the book of Acts. In the first volume of this book, I wrote on everything that Jesus began to do and teach. Until the day he said goodbye to the apostles. Now, this was taken from the Message Bible, yes? The Message Bible. Until the day he said goodbye to the apostles. The ones he had chosen through the Holy Spirit. And was taken up to heaven. After his death. 
He presented himself alive to them in many different settings over a period of 40 days. In face to face meetings. Okay. Whether you believe it or not, me, I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Oh, sorry. Oh, he... Now listen to this. And he talked to them about things concerning. <laughs> so, before he started his ministry, he said to them, The reason why I am here is to preach the kingdom of God, the rule of God. And then after his resurrection, after now, his death, now, he, he reminded them again for 40 days about the things he has already taught them. Taking control. Taking control. Ruling over issues. Do you understand that? What you say? Do you understand that? What you say? Please, do not forget this as long as you live. Tomorrow I said to you, I, I want to teach you how to do it. When you start seeing difficulties, you don't start to weep. Rather, you say, you say, I have the opportunity to express who I really am. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and everything. Next. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Romans 8, verse 19. I want us to read this from the Amplified. This is what the world is waiting for. This is what that sickness that you have now is waiting for. This is what the poverty that you are going through right now is waiting for. For even the whole creation, all nature awaits expectantly and longs earnestly for God's sons to be made known. <laughs> I pray that God's sons here will be made known. Amen. The Amplified says the whole earth is <laughs> waits for the revealing the disclosing of the sonship. The word used there for sonship is maturity. God's sons there means those who have mature. Galatians 4, 1 to 3. Now, now I say that the heir as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is the master of all. As long as you remain a child, that sickness is still ruling over you. He says, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ from a slave. That's right. Though he is the master of all, but under guidance and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. So, 
someone is saying right now. Brother, promise you've said this all. So for promise, what can we in a but so and I believe that I am the visual manifestation of God. I believe I'm supposed to rule my situation right now does not reflect who I really am. So what do I do? You cannot express or display more than you have been able to measure quantify, evaluate, assess by your knowledge. For lack of knowledge, my people perish. Tomorrow, now, I have taken you through a step, yes? I, I taught you about God's original plan. Then I have shown you the reason for the plan. Tomorrow, I want to show you how to respond to, to the plan. And we will start reigning. We will start ruling. We will start taking dominion over situations that have hitherto held us down for too long stay blessed Ciao.